This example is going to show you how we can take what we built in the previous exercise where we created a parallax effect using CSS and now we're going to add two additional elements, these little fish, and we're going to use some CSS but mostly JavaScript to be able to animate these elements on scroll. So you can see that the two fish are going to move to the right when I scroll down and when I scroll up, they're going to swim back to the left. And they are doing different sorts of behaviors. The fish with the purple actually flips around and swims in the proper direction. The other fish is a little bit of a, a special fish in that it always faces towards the right. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how you could use some JavaScript to create some further interactivity on your web pages. In regards to the HTML, this is exactly the same as the HTML that I used in the parallax example. If you want to learn more about how I created this parallax effect, I suggest you watch that particular video and I'll place a link down in the description for you. But right now we're going to be focusing on these two little fish. So all I've done in regards to the HTML is I added two divs. Each has its own unique class of F1 and F2, and they are going to contain the fish elements. We'll start off by jumping into the HTML, and we're just going to add a little bit of CSS so that we can make this effect work in the appropriate way. And we're going to start off by concentrating on our yellow fish, which has a class of F1. So I'm going to go ahead and create just a little bit of CSS for this particular element. We're going to be using position of absolute. And I'm going to go ahead and set my top value to 50%. And we're going to set left to 0. And then finally, I'm just going to set a transform property and we'll go ahead and pass in a translate X and I'm going to use negative 100%. So what I want to do is I want to be able to move this element in the X or the horizontal way. And when I first do this, you're going to see that my fish is not visible. Don't worry about that. We'll fix that in just a second. So now that I have my CSS all squared away, I'm going to go ahead and create some JavaScript and we'll be creating this in our HTML. I'll just place this at the bottom of the page. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a script tag. And what we'll be doing is we'll be creating some JavaScript that will allow us to move an element horizontally based on the user's scroll position. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add an event listener to the window object and I'm going to be listening for the scroll event. What this means is that when the user scrolls on the page, the function inside the event listener is going to be called. The next line of code that we're going to need is we need some code that can retrieve the current vertical scroll position of the window. And in order to do this, we're going to be using the window.scrolly property. So I'm going to create a variable and we'll just call this scroll position. We're going to make this equal to window.scrolly. Now we'll create a line of code that is going to control the horizontal movement distance based on the current scroll position. We'll go ahead and we'll call this move distance. And again, we're creating another variable. I'm going to make this equal to scroll position. And then we're just going to pass in times two. What this code does is it multiplies the scroll position by whatever numeric value that you want. So if you wanted this to move a little bit faster, you could increase that value. But I'm going to multiply it by two, which is going to get a move distance of twice the scroll position. And you can clearly adjust this value to control the speed of your movement. And you can play around with it so that you can get exactly what you want. The final line of code is going to apply our CSS transformation to the element that has the class of F1, which is our first fish. And we're going to be using the transform property to do this. This will allow us to move the element horizontally 
by the calculated move distance. So I'm going to use document.query selector. We're going to go ahead and we're going to find our F1 element, which is that first fish. And then I'm just going to use style.transform. And we're going to make this equal to translate X. And let's actually quote this. And in regards to how much we want to move it, we're going to go ahead and just use some code that will allow us to concatenate in our move distance. That's a numeric value that we're going to be getting. And then we're just going to need to add on our PX to the end of this line of code. If we save this and if we refresh on our page, you will see that when I start to scroll my page, that little yellow fish is going to swim across the page. So there it is. When I scroll down, it swims to the right. When I scroll up, it's going to move back to the left. So this particular fish, he swims fine when he's facing towards the right, but when we scroll up, he looks a little odd. And what I'll do for the next fish is I'll show you a way that we can compensate for this. But you might not always be working with an element that needs to face a specific direction. So this code is pretty easy and it allows us to build in this functionality with just a couple lines of JavaScript. Now let's go ahead and create some JavaScript for our second fish. This one is going to be similar, but it's going to be a little bit more involved because of what we want to have happen. So for the second fish, we want it to behave in a similar way that our first fish behaves, except that when the user scrolls up, we actually want to flip the fish and then have it swim in the opposite direction. We'll begin our code by creating a couple of variables. To start off with here, I'm going to create a constant. To start off with, I'm going to create a constant and I'll just call this scroll move. We're going to make this equal to document.query selector. And this time we're going to go ahead and select our second fish, which in my particular case has a class of F2. What we're ultimately doing is we're going to be listening on the window object for the scroll event, the same thing that we did in the first example. But this time when the user scrolls, we want to check to see whether the current scroll position is greater than the previous scroll position or not. And then based on the result, we want to apply different transformations to this scroll move element that we just created. So now that we've captured that element from the DOM and stored it into our scroll move variable, let's go ahead and create another variable. And for this one, I'm going to use a let and we'll call this one prev scroll position, or I'm just going to use POS. So it's a little bit shorter and we're going to make this equal to the window dot scroll Y property. This line just initializes our prev scroll position variable to the current scroll position of the window. Then we're going to go ahead and add our event listener to the window element. We're going to be listening for the scroll event. And this time I'll just use arrow functions to make this a little bit shorter. When the scroll event is captured or when that's registered, then we're going to want to execute a function. The first thing that we're going to do inside our function is we're going to create a new constant or a new variable and we'll call this one current scroll position. Let's go ahead and set this to window.scrolly. This just gets the current scroll position of the window and stores it into our new variable that we just created. Then what we'll do is we'll use a conditional. We're going to use an if statement. And we're going to check whether the current scroll position is greater than the previous scroll position or not. So we'll go ahead and we'll just say if, and our condition is going to be current scroll position. And we'll just check to see if that is greater than the previous scroll position. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll create our code for the scroll down. So if the current scroll position is greater than the previous scroll position, what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to remove a class of flip, which I'll talk about in just a second. 
So we'll go ahead and specify scroll move and we'll use our class list and we're going to go ahead and pass in remove. And what I want to remove is going to be this flip class. This is what's going to allow the fish to flip directions. In addition to removing this flip class, we're going to also want to set the transform property and move the element to the right based on the current scroll position. We're going to keep it centered by using the translate Y function. And then we'll also go ahead and move our element to the right based on the current scroll position of translate X. So let's go ahead and let's write scroll move dot style dot transform. We're going to make this equal to, so I'll use back ticks here. So I'm going to set translate Y to negative 50%. And then we'll set translate X. And for this one, we're going to go ahead and use our current scroll position. And after we get that value, we're going to have to add on our PX. And let's just place a back tick at the end of this line of code. And we'll use our semicolon right there. So if the current scroll position is less than or equal to the previous scroll position, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and specify what's going to happen if the user is going to scroll up. So in that case, let's pass in an else statement. And what we're going to do here is if the current scroll position is less than or equal to the previous scroll position, this would indicate that the user is scrolling up. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add in that flip class. And then we're going to want to set the transform property to flip it horizontally. And we'll use our scale X function to do this. If we just pass in negative one for scale X, that will actually flip it. And then we're also going to need to use our translate Y. We'll set this to negative 50%. And then finally, we're going to use translate X. And for this, we're just going to get the negative value of the current scroll position. Once again, scale X of negative one is going to flip it horizontally. And then when we use our translate X, we're going to be moving it to the left based on the current scroll position. And then our translate Y is just going to keep it centered vertically. And then finally, the last thing that we're going to need to add here is after our else statement is done. We're just going to set our previous scroll position and we're going to just make this equal to our current scroll position. So we just need to update the current scroll position so that next time the function is called, it can compare the new scroll position with the updated previous scroll position. Let's jump back into our CSS. We'll save our HTML first. Then we'll go back into our CSS and let's just quickly make a rule for our F2 element. We're going to go ahead and add a position of fixed. I'll set the left value to negative 100 pixels. This is just going to simply move it off the screen and to the left initially. I'm going to set top to 30% so it's a little bit higher than our other fish. And then we're going to use our transform and we're gonna pass in translate Y of negative 50%, and then we'll set our translate X to zero. And then finally, I'm just going to use a transition property, and we're just gonna transition our transform, and we'll have this happen over maybe 0.8 seconds, and let's just use a ease out. And if we save now, and here's our page, and when we start to scroll, you can see that my little purple fish is going to come on the screen. And if I start to scroll back up, the fish is going to turn around and swim off of the screen. And you could play around with these values. You could do all sorts of different sorts of things to make this work. But I thought this was a fun way to enhance our parallax effect that we looked at earlier and just adding some additional elements with a little sprinkling of JavaScript to make it a little bit more interactive.